Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day four of our Killing Comparison devotional in the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And the scriptures all up in this one, so Tori's going to take it from here. Yes, y'all, let's do it. Today's devotional says this. We have spent the last few days exploring the origins and outcomes of toxic comparison in our lives. Today and tomorrow, we want to focus our attention on how to harness the power of healthy comparison so we can kill toxic comparison in our lives. Our focus verse is an important call to action. In Matthew seven twelve says this, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. When our insecurity gets triggered, we feel left out, overlooked, less than, and discouraged. But what if we turned those feelings on their head to commit ourselves to making sure others don't feel that way because of our actions? What if we made an intentional effort to include, to celebrate, encourage and affirm people when we're feeling left out, overlooked, discouraged, and not good enough. This is what our verse is leading us to do because killing comparison requires being for others what we wish others would be for us. Case in point, I received an email inviting me to a gathering for influencers, people who are considered leaders in their various fields of endeavor, business, media, music, ministry, etc., I was honored to get the invitation, but when I checked the list of invitees, my name wasn't on it, and I immediately felt my insecurity get triggered. It felt like an emotional ice pick stabbed in my heart as I read the names of people I admired, only to realize I wasn't listed with them. But instead of descending into self-loathing, this verse began to resonate in my spirit as I heard the Lord say, Nona. You may not be on the list, but you were on the host's heart. I reviewed the list again and noticed a number of other influential people missing. So I asked the host if I could invite them, and they said, sure. I reached out to the missing people and invited them so they could enjoy the gathering too. And as it turned out, I ended up being unable to attend due to a conflict. God used that situation to heal my heart and to help me experience the freedom of living beyond the reach of toxic comparison. Instead of focusing on being left off a list, getting people added to the list by noticing who else was missing empowered me because I treated others the way I wanted to be treated. And killing comparison requires treating people the way you would like to be treated, included valued, worthy. Yeah, this is something that's actually really close to my heart. Kind of like in the same way that Tori and I talk on this podcast a lot about how, just like what Romans 8 says, there's now, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus. But that doesn't mean that we don't experience conviction. Yeah. And conviction is a good thing. Right. And so whenever we have those feelings of, say, comparison rile up, yeah, comparison is not like the goal. However, there have been so many instances where I've seen someone in public or I have one of my friends or one of my mentors or whoever live a life in a way that, that uh, rose up that conviction within my heart. And it wasn't that whenever I was comparing myself to them, I wasn't condemning myself, but it, I was feeling that conviction that called me up to live yeah, differently. Different, yeah. And so that conviction or comparison can be used in good ways mm -hmm. when you have the right heart posture towards it. Yeah. But I actually felt something kind of similar to the author. And I, first off, this is going to sound like a humble brag and I don't mean it that way at all. But there have been several instances in my life, I'm just going to be transparent about it, that I have been the one on the invite list. Mm -hmm. And I noticed people who were not on the invite list. Mm -hmm. And I, more often than not, chose to not go because of this feeling in my heart where I felt like things were becoming a little too exclusive, mm -hmm. um, where it felt like the, the, cool, kids the cool kids table. Yeah. And I didn't really like that. And so, but not that I'm judging those people because you can invite or uninvite whoever you want but within my own heart I know how it's I know how I felt in the past to yeah. feel not included yeah. 
And I know when I saw other people being not included, I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to go to this. But so much so that now it's impacted my life in a way that Tori and I, we have friends who don't have family. Mm -hmm. They lost their parents at a young age. And when it comes time for the holidays, these people sometimes don't have a place to go. Mm -hmm. And so we love to find ways to celebrate the holidays with our friends and invite them in as if they are family Mm -hmm. to include them. And so I think it's so great whenever we, we recognize that feeling and then we can go into our circle of influence and figure, okay, wow, how can I love on people the way I would hope people would love on me and look after me. And so this is a great thing for us to, to wrestle with when it comes to having comparison. It's like not to compare that leads to condemnation, but we can't compare when it, when it leads to conviction. Yeah, no, that's so good. I love anything that kind of like turns something toxic into something fruitful. And I feel like this is such a good call to action for us because we live in a day and age where it is easier to compare ourselves than it ever has been in the history of ever because we have so much access to other people's highlight reels and we're seeing other people hang out all the time like I don't think we were ever designed to see what everyone else was doing literally all of the time I don't think people went through this a hundred years ago they didn't know that Susie and Jill were hanging out down the street and they weren't invited Mm -hmm. like they were just doing their thing and she was doing her thing at home and everything was kind of chill and normal but now we live in society where we do know when things are happening and we aren't invited or not included etc and so what do we do with it do we allow the enemy to take root to take a foothold to get in that comparison trap and lead us into like these spiraling thoughts and negative feelings to like override or do we look at it as an opportunity to number one celebrate these other people celebrate what they're doing celebrate the impact they might be having on the kingdom or celebrate that their friendship is flourishing or do we look at it as an opportunity man that looks like a blast I should invite someone over for coffee Mm. I should open up my doors I should include someone and make them feel seen maybe I'm not feeling seen right now so let me let me actually Fine, let me look for someone and make them feel loved because we are more blessed to give than to receive. So if we focus on how we are treating others more than how we are being treated, I think it's going to lead to a more joy-filled life. Yeah, and it takes the sting out of it. Mm -hmm. I love how the enemy loves to use these situations to attack your mind. And just like what Tori was saying, we now have access to compare ourselves in every aspect of our lives, every single day, all day. Literally, every second of the day. And you know what the hard part is? Is like, okay, you get on, say, Instagram and you're scrolling. You're like, okay, I see someone on vacation. Like, okay, I wish I was there. Not a big deal. Okay, you you took that thought captive Mm -hmm. and you moved on from it. Okay, scroll, next person. Well, they're also on vacation. Uh, okay, God, I wish I were on vacation, uh-huh. you know? Okay, take that thought captive, you move on. Then you see someone got engaged and you've been wanting to get engaged. Oh, okay, God, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just literally, you can you can find a way to be jealous or envious mm-hmm. and compare yourself to someone else's life. If you go looking for trouble, you're going to find it. It will rob you of so And much so peace. don't be afraid to also take a break if you need it. Mm-hmm to give yourself some space to breathe. Cause just like what Tori said is like, whenever I was seven years old, I didn't have access to know what everyone was yeah. doing all the time. And I was honestly a lot happier, yeah. <laughs> but it was just this mindset of just like, okay, give yourself some space mm-hmm. to breathe and to yeah. be yourself without worrying about what everyone else is doing all the time. Because yeah. whether you understand it or not, whenever you are say scrolling on social media or you see the invite list or whatever that may look like, there are things that are happening subconsciously that you're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to guard your heart and to give yourself a space to just be okay without constantly intaking things that could lead you to feeling worse about yourself. Yeah, that's good. Want to pray this out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this devotional today. We thank you that you can take what the enemy deems for harm and use it for good. 
for your glory, Father. Would you help us see opportunities where we can help love others better, where we can help someone else feel seen, feel worthy, feel valuable, feel invited, Father? Would you let us be the person who changes the way they see themselves, that they see themselves through your eyes because of the way we treat them, Father, because you live inside of us. Set us apart, Lord. Help us be the one that makes someone else feel your love today. Open our eyes to the opportunities to do this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. I do have a, another quick thing as you were praying that kind of sparked within me, if that's okay, yeah. if I share that real quick. Um, my friend James, we always have these texts back and forth with each other where we'll say, like, you're welcome and invited. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you all have felt times where you, you're invited, but you don't think you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you know you're welcome, but the person didn't invite you. Yeah. And so I think it could be a great reminder for all of us to say, it's like, yeah, you're, you, your community Both. may be welcome at your house, but have you invited them over, yeah. right? Or if you have invited them over, are you welcoming them in? Yeah. And so it's a great challenge for us. I love that. Anyways, now's the perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Aloha. Aloha.